That was a good preview. All right. All right. Let me know when you're ready. Ready. In the nature and power of Allah, the master of spiritual insight and perceive of all truths, I rise to give all praises due to Allah, and I give honor to his holy and illustrious prophet, Noble Juali, the savior of humanity, and the founder of the Morris Science Temple of America. For all intents and purposes, it should be in, you should be informed that this is not under the auspices of the Morris Science Temple of America, nor is anything pertaining to my organization or establishment in affiliation with the Morris Science Temple of America, lest that I am a member of the organization and that the I to take the teachings to the lame man and woman of the United States of America, i.e. the Asiatics and Moors descent who have been disenfranchised due to the lack of nationality. Uh, take it personally. I give honor to the Angel and Training Association of North America, the Angel Training Corps, and of course the Angel Training Academy, which is the auspices of which this meeting here today, this class and lesson, class number four, week number five, and we are going to be going in today under the seven constituent, constituent, constitu, constituent, excuse me, constituent principles. I think you got me nervous, man. The new one, man. Constituent of nationality. We have seven proponents. And the seven proponents that we've covered in the last month, although constantly repeated, must be recognized by the people and then accepted because you can't accept something you don't recognize. And the reason that we don't accept ourselves is because we don't recognize ourselves. Everybody right? Everybody can hear me? Do I need to raise my voice? Is this better? Should I be projecting? You gotta let me know. I was fine, so I can return to this and I'm good. All right. So we're gonna go first in the custom. You were here, you were here. And I'm a, you got you got the freebie for today. What is a custom? Um, a practice. Um, well, um, I guess a cultural practice that people engage in. You good? That's it. Now, in our Thursday class. When I go to college, uh, where I teach the legal application of nationality, we went into the various terms and the legal aspect so that we know how to apply them socially, economically, and politically. And uh, of course, you see, the thing of a drill society is it's an association of people that are governed by laws. These laws are accepted by the people, but all of these things derive from custom. See, custom is the base foundation of law. Custom, a practice followed by people of a particular group or region. Two, a habitual practice of a person. Three, a common tradition or usage so long established that it has the force or validity of law. Force validity of law. So, when we go into custom, one of the customs that we go, into, as Moorish Americans, is our greeting. Customary greeting of the Moors is, we say Islam. It's not a religious custom, that's our native language. And we say peace, because we greet each other in peace. And that's very ancient. After some time, a custom evolved and developed, where we would say peace be unto you. And as language evolves into various dialects while still retaining its primary uh, original pieces and points. What occurs is that variations start to spread about depending on the group or region. So a good example is the region of the H.A. and Coptic Empire, which is now known as Kemet by some scholars, I don't know why, because people never call themselves black, but they call it Kemet because Kemet means black, when in reality the name of that geographical location and their body politic was Hikupata, as in the Hikoptic Empire, which were Moors. But that's a whole nother day and less than a year. And we go into the Hikoptics, or the people referring to themselves as Ethiopians, who bear witness to Jesus Christ, 
no matter what language you were saying, because of course there's people who don't speak English, like when I said Jesus Christ, they probably would have said Yeshua Kedda or something like that to that effect. I don't speak the language, I don't know, but I don't speak my own language, which is why I'm not in tune with all my customs, but we'll get back to that. Going back to the Ethiopian so-called who greet each other when they do, they say, Hassanamu Alaikum. So that's not a Muslim greeting of Christians, you know what I'm saying? They are some Buddhists who will greet each other with Assalamu Alaikum. We have customs. An Arab custom, for example, is to pray five times a day at a certain time. I looked at the put on the seat for prayer. It said pray both ends of the day. In the morning when you wake up, maybe before you go to sleep. I count to four so far. In another, in another ayat, the story in ayat, it said pray throughout the day. But I was listening to Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan speak this last weekend, and he said that every time that you greet a person in peace, so assalamu alaikum, there was a custom that was attached to it. A certain action that must be followed. So, you know, you know the difference between assalamu alaikum, sister, and assalamu alaikum, sister. There's a certain custom. You're not writing exact. You know what I'm saying? If you're not following the customary tradition, custom culture tradition, so that everything is linked. And so if you're not really following the customs of your people, but you just do certain things, then you're not in tune. So when we say assalamu alaikum, and when we stand on the square of 45 degrees, and then make a right square angle, and then we make another right square angle, and we stand it with 390s, which is 2-7, you know what I'm saying? We're not going to talk about the other 90 above me, you know what I'm saying? Oh, we can't even go into 720 degrees and all that, but when you go like this, you should be knowing love, truth, peace, freedom, justice, because that is a custom of more Americans coming right, 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 because we stand on the right angle and we move in the right angle because the thoughts are what's going to bring about the actions, and our actions are the reflections of our thoughts. So. Can anybody here name a custom of black people? Same nigga, my man. The new guy. He said same nigga. Custom of black people on uh, what's custom? New Year's Day, make black eyed peas. Looking out for cops. I don't think I ever been that black. <laughs> Dapper people. Dapper people. Yo, what up, my nigga? As opposed to. Islam. Don't leave me hanging, man. You in the class, man. Boom. You know what I'm saying? We go right back. Uh, bring it to the heart. Some people don't do that. I do. I've been doing that since young. Because even gangbangers know when you and it comes from the heart. Or don't do it. So when we have customs, these customs come from our forefathers, our ancient forefathers brought down to us, which is why these customs eventually become law. Because if you're not following the customs, then you're breaking the law. Why? Because you're not doing what your foremothers and forefathers did. That's unlawful and it's also known as sin. Even the Israelites knew that. After getting washed a few times. They even saw Egypt get washed. Kevin, Yakuta, ETC. And they still didn't honor their foremothers and forefathers by following the customs. So Moses had to establish the law. Oh, so Adam didn't have customs? Nah. So. What about all the other, pro no, they didn't have customs, no. no. So when we're looking at customs, and we're looking at what it is that we're doing, why it is that we're doing, and how it affects us on the social, economic, and political scale, we can then start to gauge how we're going to be affected in our environments. You see, somebody down walking down the street, if you go like this, yo, what up? And keep it moving, you're going to be looking, you're going to be establishing another custom. Which is what the brother said, looking out for cops. It's customary for black people. Because in my hood, you get somebody to die, and you get ran down on like what you sold them. Not I, said the captain. Because when I go like this. See, one of the things when you're putting up your hand, you're showing, the, you're showing your brother or your sister that I'm not here to harm you. You see, you see my hand. Oh, there'd be something here. Because more than all, moving around with scimitars, staffs, canes, you know. And when you go like this and you let somebody know I'm coming in Islam, what is Islam? Peace. How many of y'all Muslim? Feel me? This is universal. You don't have to be like I subscribe to this to know that. Islam means peace. Islam means complete submission to the will of God. Well, if you're following your own will, you'll be at peace. 
But how do you know your own will? You gotta know where your will coming from. So you gotta honor your foremothers and forefathers, and that goes into knowing their customs and then effectuating them. Cause somebody going around just saying Islam, and then you saying Islam, but you're like, oh Islam, I can't stand that nigga. You just a Negro in the feds. I said it. What? You know what I'm saying? A so-called Negro. It's actually impossible for a man to be a Negro, black of color, due to the law of mathematics. We are made in the image and likeness of our Father God, Allah. A Negro is dead. Allah is a true and living. Therefore, it is impossible for any human being to be a Negro. If you are a Negro, you're not human. Therefore, you won't get treated like one. Then your family will be marching. As opposed to doing what civilized beings would do, which is to take part in their affairs by following the customs of their nation. By following the customs of their nation and effectuating it into law. Because it's validated by law, customs, right? Okay. What's a custom? A practice? No, no system. No, you You're asking a new guy. Oh, I'm sorry. Practice, uh, custom, yes, sir. Custom is uh, what I heard something that people became used to over a long period of time and then it became natural mm -hmm. to them. Mm -hmm. That's the way that they use it and the way that it, it, it interacts and corresponds with them on a daily basis. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Um, sister, would you please look up culture for me? Does everybody have a good grasp on culture or custom? If you know the importance of custom, raise your hand. All right, Sister Ty, I'm going to explain to you the importance of custom. Practices are established because practice means perfect. We're on this plane of existence to build the temple of perfected man. Right? That's all right to speak to me, sister. Yes. I'm not going to hurt you. Matter of fact, let me step back. Right? Yes. Right. So as we build in the temple of perfected man, and we have these practices in order to keep us in line with our divine will. Name a practice that would keep us in our divine will. Woo! 
All right. Boom. Let's go into the turban as a custom. Actually, actually, sister, will you? Thank you for bringing me into the next one. Uh, read our culture. The totality of socially transmitted behavior patterns, arts, beliefs, institutions, and all other products of human work and thought. These products considered as the expression of a particular period, class, community, or population. These products considered with respect to a particular category, such as a field, subject, or mode of expression, oral culture, intellectual and artistic activity, and the works produced by it, development of the intellect through training or education, enlightenment resulting from such training or education, a high degree of, of taste and refinement formed by aesthetic and intellectual training. Ooh, Special yeah. training and development, the cultivation of soil tillage, the breeding of animals or growing of plants, especially to produce improved stock. Bio. Uh -huh. B I O L. Mm -hmm. A. The culturing of microorganisms or other living matter. B. Such a growth or colony. Uh, and then it goes on to give the root the ending. Yeah, I got that part. You see, because what the European does, he says that the uh, origin of words is Indo-European. That's another way to say, you know, not a devil. Middle English, cultivation. From Latin, cultura, or cultus. Part of colere, see cultivate. Cultura. It's funny that cultura is Latin, it is also Spanish, and it's also English. Because vowels are interchangeable. So, now that we're not diving out the part, let's go to the first joint that it said. See, culture has to do with the totality of socially transmitted behavior patterns, arts, beliefs, institutions, and all other products of human work and thought. What is a turban? What is your turban? Let's not talk about everyone else. Not everyone is informed. Turban is a national or religious headdress, Moorish Americans. It is the ancient headdress of our foremothers and forefathers. Socially, it is interpreted for one wearing a turban to be of a royal descent nature. So when you see a turban, you are already inclined to draw the conclusion based on past experiences that these people must, of course, obviously be of a royal designated nature. You have a national headdress because this is the headdress that was worn by your nation. But it is a religious headdress because of the beliefs in which you hold, the belief of peace, within yourself and all things in existence, making it an Islamic headdress and coincidentally, one of the oldest headdresses that has ever been in existence. The turban is in fact not a head wrap. The turban is a turban. My fez is not a hat. This is a customary headdress, a part and partial of my culture. So when you see my fez, or when you see my turban, you are automatically inclined by the DNA and the microorganisms in your body that are going to react in your mind due to the mirror neurons going all in the brain, neurological synapses to be like, whoa, this guy looks like what I should be looking like. That's just natural. It's customary that so-called Negroes see that and know what time it is as soon as they see it. So, we understand that this turban, as well as my fez, 
part of my culture is also a part of my institution. That institution being a body politic, known as the Moore Science Temple of America, where we were taught, question number 15, how did the prophet uplift the Moorish Americans? Go ahead, Thomas Hill. Um, by, by, teaching teaching them them to, to, by teaching them to think? By teaching to them to be themselves. Be themselves, sorry. I was close. You was close. Because the prophet said if I could get you to think, you would save, save yourself. yourself. If he could get you to think, the prophet said that he came to learn, he teaches how to learn to love instead of hate. Well, when I got this fast on, it's kind of hard to be a hater. In fact, I had to be holding my tongue. Many times. In fact, this fez done save people's lives in some cases. Because I'm a really funny cat, man. I make you go home and kill yourself. You're really funny, man. But that's not what Muslims do. And that constant customary reminder of my culture keeps me in the bounds of my divine will when my forefathers, my forefathers wouldn't say nothing to hurt you. They wouldn't even have a harmful thought towards you. And knowing that, I keep my fez on every day. Not, be, not for me, really. But for me, really. We're going to go into a turban right quick. I'm, re I'm reading out of uh, the pheasant turban, the meaning, symbolism, and the significance by Brother Azim Hawkins Bay, Grand Sheikh of Divine Minister, the Moorish Science Temple of America, Temple Number 11. And, um, there's a portion here. Pheasant turban worn among Moors in America prior to the arrival of Europeans, of the Europeans. They exist, in this page six, there exists evidence of the pheasant turban being present in North, South, and Central America during the pre-Columbian period. In South America, the German art historian and collector Alexander von Wuthenau describes a group of heads produced by Mexic artists from the Huasaco now nah, that says Huacaco. Yeah, early. Huacaco region in Mexico as Moorish looking. He also refers to a superb Moorish looking clay sculpture of the Veracruz classic, 300 to 900 Common Era period. There's also a. Now, when did Columbus get here? No, Columbus never got here. He landed in a, what they call La Republica Dominicana. So he didn't get to see that. He, he sure did run into people we called Indians. Indians being those who were members of the Hindustani Empire, which was the eastern extension of the Moroccan Empire, thereby making those Moors. Right? And it says here, <laughs> well, I like this guy. There is also a classic era of Veracruz sculpture described by Wutanao as a fine characterization of an old man with a hat. Yet the so-called hat looks identical to a Moroccan-style fez. The Native American, 1991, actually describes the head coverings of the Osaj and Arikara of the Southeast Plains as turbans. Young Seminole men are also shown wearing what the text called turbans, which resemble Maghribi fezes. So I would draw the conclusion based on just a little reading. That the fez I'm wearing is just a male version of the turban. Well, if women were here first, then that means that certain customs are type old. Because how long has man been here? So how long have turbans been around? When we're looking at a turban, and we getting if you see, because he, you know, you know, he can't, you know what I'm saying? Get people everything, but I'ma just right quick, you know what I'm saying? Go into the science of the manipulation of energies. And when you manipulate in the energy that's up here, you know what I'm saying? Your antenna, your head. Your head is protein, right? Is it protein or produced by protein? It is protein. Alright, cool. Just making sure y'all not just now no yes man, man. I, you know what I mean? I lead you straight to hell and you be like, man, it's getting cold. You know what I'm saying? So, what am I saying? Come on. The air. Yeah. Uh huh. And so, the and what else? Uh huh. Antenna. And so, what do antenna do? Communicate. Transmit. Now, I think I'm going to keep my energy to myself. You know what I'm saying? 
And should I have somebody who I need to communicate with that intimately, I'll meet them at home upon the removal of my customary religious headdress, which is a part of my culture. It's actually also a traditional head. What is a tradition? Nah, I can't pick one. Danielle, what is a tradition? Um, a tradition is something that is ongoing um, by a certain culture that has been, I guess, we're going for a, a significant amount of time. It gives a historic continuity. No, I, I like that. You kind of reached that one. That was hot. It's, it's similar to a custom. But I like the fact that she pointed out the historic continuity. This custom is also dealing with history. Coincidentally, so is culture. So we see how important this history is, because history is embedded in the main in the main in the, in the main definition of custom, culture. And can you give us tradition please, Tom? The passing down of elements of a culture from generation to generation is by oral. Especially, especially by all communication. Um, you keep going? Nah, we can stop right there. Matter of fact, say the first sentence again for me. The passing down of elements of a culture from generation to generation, especially by oral communication. The passing down of elements of a culture. So it is similar to custom. But the tradition is actually, so a piñata is a tradition. Is a piñata part of Mexican culture? When was the last time you seen Mexicans with a piñata? Have you ever seen Mexicans celebrate anything around you? No, you just happen to be there.